Black holes are extreme manifestations of Einstein's theory of gravity, objects that are so massive that even light cannot escape. And these sound like they might be rare exotic objects, but in fact, we expect there to be millions, if not billions, of such things in our galaxy. Now, despite black holes being so numerous, it's extremely hard to find them, because after all, they're black. To put things into perspective, during the past few decades, we've only observed around 20 to 30 black holes. Because black holes are, as their name implies, black, we only see them when they're participating in extraordinary events, like when we find them caught in the act of cannibalizing a neighboring star, or falling towards each other, emitting ripples in the shape of space that were recently detected this past year. Both of these situations are exceedingly rare events. So far, our methods could only detect black holes in closed binary systems, and those are a very special class of black holes. So for the vast majority of black holes that we think must have formed as the endpoints of massive stellar evolution, we simply have no way to find them. We propose a method that can find black holes even when they're isolated, traversing silently through our galaxy that uses the gravitational lensing of background stars and background radio sources. When a light source passes behind a black hole, the light rays are bent, and as a result, the image we see is distorted into these different shapes. Our method uses the small deflections of light from background stars and from quasars, the powerful hearts of galaxies far away to measure the space-time in between and find our wayward black holes. This is not the first time that people have used microlensing to try to find these black holes. But in the past, all people ever had access to was the sudden rapid brightening and fading associated with an unresolved microlensing event. But what we're proposing is for the first time generate movies of these events that show the full deflection, the full bending of the light behind them in all of its splendor. Now there's a lot more information in a movie than there is in, in a simple light curve. And given such a movie, we can find everything about the black hole. And that is the mass of the black hole, its distance from us, and how fast it is moving. The exciting thing is we can do this in the near future. We don't need to wait for new technologies to develop. We can just use the currently available telescopes and just have them look for it. To do that, we're joining existing microlensing surveys, observations where people stare and wait at a single patch of sky for those little microlensing flashes, and then use those flashes to trigger radio imaging efforts. In the near future, a number of new telescopes are going to become available, CHIME in British Columbia and the Square Kilometer Array that could run radio surveys, and that's when the payoff really begins. This simulation shows what you would actually see when a light source passes behind a black hole. And the evolution of the images here gives us the exact information we are looking for. For the past 10,000 years, astronomers have been studying the light side of the universe. And we have now just begun to begin to study the dark side of the universe with gravitational waves. And the critical element that this project brings is to bring the two of those together.